So, shall we? Anybody else have any questions, or do we want to proceed with the completeness question? Want to make a motion? I'm willing to make a motion. Um, so, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Adam Salve for a research, research protection resource protection permit to clear 31,581 square feet of RP1 wetland buffer to plant high bush blueberries on a lot located behind 88 Ocean House Road be deemed incomplete. Do I have a second? Victoria, second. Before we take a vote, um, I need to let everybody know that once we do this vote, if we find it incomplete, we can't ask any more questions or do any more discussion or give any more guidance. So anything anyone would like to any offer, time. we should say like it before we vote. Just for clarification, the, the tree removal, would an applicant be required to submit additional information? a forestry plan or a detailed plan from a licensed forester to remove the trees. I can come back to you with um, a summary of what the ordinance requires. Would that be sufficient? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I just one thing. If you remove trees, what are, and this is a question I guess, but what's the, what's the rule with replanting some trees to make up for what you remove? In other words, if you remove 20 other trees and you put 20 trees in, or 20 other trees. You're putting in blueberry bushes. Well, I know you're putting in blueberry bushes. You don't want trees. You need the sun. Well, no, but I'm not on top of the blueberries, but I mean in that generalized area. If you replace them close by, that's what I'm trying to say. You're, you're taking away some uh, evaporation okay. processes from the water thing and replacing them with, tree, with bushes. And now, can you replace trees somewhere else on there to make up? And that's all I'm saying. Oh, Is that sorry. illegal or am I? The, the resource protection permit standards do provide for mitigation. So certainly an applicant could come in with a, a two-part proposal. Part one, I'm going to do this in this part of the wetland. And part two, I'm going to make up for what I did there by doing this and this and this in this part of the wetland. So yes, you could you could add plantings in an area that works for you that enhances the bottom. There's, those are definitely options. And that and, and that could be something we could insist on or or, or in the uh, just as so, uh, yes. clarifies it. For me. So that would be a point for the applicant to take into consideration, right? Reapplying. Or perhaps the issue is what happens with the water that's going to drain off of here and, and if there's another way to deal with that water so that it doesn't impact the wetland, planting trees might be one way. Creating some kind of retention facility might be another way to deal with the impacts of what you're, the impacts on the wetland of what you're planning to do. Yeah, and, and to further that advice, I would just um, refer you to the part of the ordinance, um, section 1983, beyond the submission requirements. There's a section on um, resource protection permit standards and resource protection permit conditions. And those are some of the things that we might look at in actually approving the application. So you might want to look that over and make some mention of some of the other things that we'll be looking for in order to um, approve the permit. Okay. As, as it stands right now, um, you can see on the top of the map, uh, up in the corner, it says RP2 Wetland A. Uh, that wetland there is actually a retention pond that is on site, has been existing. And if you look at the top of lines, it, everything flows into that pond and then flows downstream from there. I think that's the sort of thing that a stormwater plan would help us understand, is that right? Sure, you're you're part of, you're an applicant too, right? Sort of, yeah. 
trucks all be bought here. I'll be adding some money. So you're an own, you're a property owner? Um, yes. And then an applicant. Okay. Okay. Um, if I can understand then what you're saying is if we weren't interested in that little red piece, we could be planting blueberries till the cows come home and nobody would care. If you were not in the, the resource protection buffer, which is not just the little red piece, but it's everything to the right of that red line, the, the dotted line. The dotted line. Right. Everything to the right of the dotted line is subject to resource protection. So where we're working here already, this does not concern you. Only what concerns you is on the other side of this line. Yes. If what you're re at, referring to as a resource protection permit, that's correct. The other part of the property could concern us if you were doing something that triggered some we other were just statute. just planting blueberries, the rest of this wouldn't even come before this board? You'd ask, ask Bruce Smith. But You'd have to confirm that with Bruce. But that's generally my understanding, but that's his determination to make. Okay. The only thing that's been referred to the planning board tonight is is activities is red? to the is right the of that red? dotted line. That's right. Okay. That I just wanted to clarify that. Correct. Anything else? Are we ready to vote? So all in favor of the motion, raise your hand. It's an incomplete motion. It's an incomplete motion. Yes. A motion that it is incomplete. That's five in favor, none opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's the last item of business on the agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right. We're adjourned, we're adjourned. Thank you. That was five zero. We're, we're really here.